You'll be all the same, and on your big fat ear. Sonny? Mm, I take it that I am to infer from the foregoing two R, that unless I bring the Colonel and appear into a sizable proportion, my prospects of redundancy will be greatly enhanced. <laughs> Must be nearer the board than I thought. Damn cheeky swine. Thank goodness Corporal Bly starting work this afternoon. Corporal Bly? Yes, you remember him. My butt man. Hmm, I'm hardly likely to forget him, Phil. He undresses you in the bedroom every night. <laughs> of course, yes. Damn good Batman right then. Dash kid. Fly, good man. You've arrived already. Splendid. Yes, sir. Thought I'd pop over a bit early today. A bit warmish today, sir. Warmish. I don't think I can handle it much longer, you know. What it must be like for the lads on parade. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the regiment. Yes. I must get out there and inspect them. Least I can do. <laughs> now, <laughs> where's my helmet? Down. It's the same way to say. But it's too small. Can't something be done about it? Talking about being out of things, 
What happened to your dress? Um, I had it off. Oh, I mean, I, I took it off. It's just a curse of heat, you know. I know. That's what drives a man mad. The heat. The damned prickly heat. Everyone's on heat. Phil, stop rambling. Just trying to make conversation. I can't stand it. You must be told. What the devil do you mean? I'm having an affair with Corporal Bly. Corporal Bly? You called, sir? I want a word with you, sir. Is it about your stiff front, Colonel? No, it's not about my stiffy, Corporal Bly. Is it true about you and my wife here? Well, perhaps. I suppose you could think that. It's what true, sir? That you're having an affair with her? Is it all true? That you've touched her? Bondled her? Caressed her? <laughs> kissed her? Well, only bits of it, sir. <laughs> oh, come on, which bits? Point them out. <laughs> I'm going to fight you, sir, for the honour of the regiment. In fact, you should be bloody well hung. What do you mean? Should be. <laughs> <laughs> come on, put it up. I mean, put them up. but only for the regiment. And whose regiment precisely would that be, you fellows? What the devil do you want, you pastor, Rob Punkawalla? I'm not why you made my chubby little pale face pass. <laughs> but this is your copy of the Telly Door Downtown. <laughs> and as for the witches, it's Bye Bye Brits and Hello Indoors. <laughs> Humbug. Let me see that. Let me do it. Let me see. Change of plan. <laughs> Independence for the Indians? <laughs> Power sharing? Perhaps. Prepare to hand over the barracks? Double a <laughs> Local representative to assume command? Triple a rump and buggery? Gad, I've been cut off in me prime. Mummy will be cross. <laughs> Boys, 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 who actually is going to be in charge around here? He is, aren't you, sir? Well, ma'am, oh. looks like we've been had. <laughs> I should be so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, big boy, I'll show you around the residence. We'll start with the master bedroom. <laughs> Always a pleasure to pleasure a lady. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, sorry state of affairs. Where of advice, lad. Never trust a woman that puts the deep heat next to the hemorrhoid cream. <laughs> <laughs> or a servant that was trained at scientist. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we dance? Delighted, Colonel. Care to leave, sir? Thank you very much. <laughs> Let your spirit start to soar. 
And you'll live as you've never lived before Slowly deftly music shall caress you Hear it, feel it, secretly possess you Open up your minds, let your fantasies unwind In this darkness which you know you cannot fight A darkness of the music of the night Stranger, stranger. 
He says he saw Leo take the nightgown. He was looking through the keyhole in Mrs. Mason, in Mrs. Mason, in Mrs. Mason's bedroom door. What? He dared to stare through there. He swear he saw Leo Mighty take the nightgown. Oh, he'll do plenty of swearing. No wonder he was scared before she was wearing. What? Surely not. He stood on the bed and pulled it over her head. She went bed, and he fled and hid himself in the shed, and wished she was dead. She was going to phone her cousin Ted, but fell in the head and lay down the bed and stepped away bed. <laughs> <coughs> so, say, Roger is alive. Have you any proof of your proof? <laughs> yes, I've seen where Grace sleeps. Her bedroom is an attic. So the story about pulling the nightdress over her head must be false. He'd have to pull the nightgown right down. There's no headroom in her bedroom. <laughs> so Roger was lying, and he must be the culprit. Game set and match chief, and so ends the disgrace for Grace Bates. What a relief, Constable. I'll just throw the chief constable. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sir. We've solved the Mrs. Mays case. I'm happy to tell you that Leo is innocent, and so is Sergeant Roger. In other words, it was not Leo, mind you, who stole the 90. It was Roger, the lodger, the soft-footed lodger, and not Sergeant Roger. Thank God. <coughs> <coughs> <coughs>
Wait, well, <laughs> this is kind of not playing well, it's chopping on here. Oh. Hey, Jared, my one works. What's this morning, man? Oh, good morrow, style chairman. It is indubitably a trifle inclement. No <laughs> need to be expected for this season of the year, don't you know? What? <laughs> season of the year? Season of the year? Look, mate, it's got nothing to do with a season of the morning here. What is right? It's a galant that has gang of quarter muggers. They switched up flame and heating off again. Well, I'll be playing like Boomer Merson. And another thing. At the risk of causing offence, dear boy, may I take this liberty of reminding you that we all agree agreed to shoulder the common burden of inconvenience, if such it is, when you agreed to mess together before the regiment closes. Officers, seniors and junior ranks, united in the common bond of mess fellowship. A magnificent gesture! <laughs>
Please be so kind as to bring me a bowl of prunes and a fig yogurt. <laughs> Most of the kind. <laughs> what? <laughs> what does a flaming orange say? I've got that do in anyway. <laughs>
it for me this evening an on honor to play for you. A wonderful song of love from my own country of Venezuela. Venezuela. <laughs> to help you understand what is saying words of this wonderful song of love, I uh, bring my friend and colleague also from my own country of Venezuela, most famous interpret. Now is my pleasure to introduce to you Senor Rodriguez de Sanchez de la Mango de Velasquez del Monte. <laughs>
gentlemen, good evening. And how are you all doing? I'm doing just great. This is your old mate, Jeremy Piddle, welcoming you back to another fun-packed edition of Short and Curlies. Yes, you lucky people, this is the show where you feeble-minded folks in the street are made to look complete prats. When you're set up by an untalented bunch of patronising smart asses, And you love it? You really do. With me tonight, I've got Tommy Atkins, the star of our show. Only last week, Tommy was a professional soldier with a promising career. Now, he's on the dole with a wife and two children to support. And no job prospects whatsoever. No siree. <laughs> Seriously, though. Thanks for coming along tonight, Tommy. Now, we'll show the viewers at home how we arranged to tell Tommy that he'd been made redundant. And you tonight, you really will. We sent star reporter Kay Teddy to Tommy's married quarter in downtown Bulford on the pretext of interviewing him about his daring exploits in Bosnia. This is what happened. You'll love it, you really will. <laughs> Amazing refugee camp with ooze of pot bellies. 
and go deep in dysentery. Fabulous stuff. Tell you what, though, let's put this in the can on a high note. A five dollar surprise for you, little Tommy. You know my darling pal, the fantastic Jeremy Piddle of the Short and Curly Show. <laughs> I'm sorry, miss, but we don't have to watch a lot of telly now. For Christ's sake, sweetie, where have you been living? The far side of the moon? Come in, Jeremy, for Christ's sake, and get me out of this. Jerry, will you get your ass in here now? Darling! <laughs> I love it. I really do. Well, Tommy, this really is your lucky day. You've probably been tipped off that you're in line for a gong from the UN for your daring exploits in Bosnia. Well, tough luck, Tommy Jim. Not enough qualifying time for you all they had to send you off to the final. Bar, but never mind that. Here's your consolation prize. Go on, ex Corporal Tommy Atkins. <laughs> Open it. You've been specially selected for the scrappy. It's the big R for you by that. So when, when they look up at you, not just in the cots and the beds, but on the streets as well, I think it's the uniforms, really. You see, they don't know what you're going to do. So you bend down to make yourself little like them. And that's when they look away. I think it must be the uniforms. Daft, really. Well, yes, quite so. You keep taking the tablets, we've got to be off. Come on, Ducky, this is on your expense account. Yeah, well, folks, that about winds up tonight's show. Shame poor old Tommy Atkins didn't seem to get the joke though, God bless him. But tune in again next week when we'll show you how 4,000 Tommy Atkins who thought they'd escaped the chop will be joining the dole queue instead. So till then, keep smiling, thank you and good night.
been a lovely night. Certainly sounds like it, sir. <laughs> no, I like to be quiet. Well, there's some as do, and there's some as do. There's no scene round these parts. Style and hedge. Water's a hedge. Mills a turning. Corn's a burning. Silence reigns upon the valley. John and Mary up the alley. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? There's likely no one is straight from you. <laughs>
This is the army, Mr. Joe. No crime proof or telephone. You had your breakfast in bed before, but you won't have it there anymore.
I think the thing is, chaps, I'm a bit worried about the RSM. I suspect the chaps has gone a bit doodally in all this heat. Tells me the core band's off to Digby, and we've all got to go as well. <laughs> now, now, what's the score? Oh, so, like steady, chaps, steady on. One at a time. Ladies first. Right, Colonel. No. <laughs> <laughs> As long as you got a hold up your Tomorrow on the trooper. 
<laughs> we never used to have a cup. We used to have to drink out of the rolls of the newspaper. <laughs>
trains and railways. <laughs> the standard of living in the army is most assuredly on its life. <laughs> I'm afraid it's a rather shocking news, Justin, sir, and I'm not quite sure how to break it to you. You don't mean I'm required to run another DFT? <laughs> <laughs> requires me to run another security awareness day? Where on earth does he think I'm going to find the time to do that? <laughs> Contacts with foreign nationals must be closely scrutinized. 
effectively what we are saying is that we don't much care for foreigners in this country. <laughs>
my dear chap, chap is all my Oh, 
mate in the entire regiment. <laughs> What's your name again, Cop? Sergeant Major, eminently promotable, Jesus <laughs> <and> Shirley Curry. <laughs> That's Shirley Hyphen Curry, by the way, Mum. Shirley as in Temple and Curry as in Vindaloo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, unfortunately, Madam, I shall be unable to partake of your bounteous generosity, as the causation of this visitation is regrettably less social than quasi-official, shall we say. <laughs> more observant of you may have detected, I was preparing to retire <laughs> when the tranquility of my bedchamber was then to suffer by the sound of revelry emanating from these quarters. Right, and, yeah. As my somewhat delicate constitution demanded uninterrupted ten hours of slumber, I decided to make personal representation, as it were. Right, gals, I reckon what he's trying to say is that you're singing Torpedo is Kit. Am I the right lines there, Evelyn, me old rocker? In a nutshell, sir, that's Evelyn, by the way. Evelyn as in war. But is it to English or it's happening to war? <laughs> 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 Evelyn, 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 Evelyn. I am always saying that the best thing is to let five ways be five ways. <laughs> I do not know who is this ridiculous person, but I am not prepared to have Nastasia's castle on my reputation. Come, ladies, we will walk. Hold on, Mrs. Wayne. Don't get your laid around in a twist. I'll tell you what, Shirley, me old mate. Why don't you have a wet cap on? And we'll have a toast. What do you say? So, very well, sir. In the interest of international harmony, I am prepared to overlook this unfortunate misunderstanding. Yeah, you <laughs> I give you a toast. <laughs> Australia fair. No putters. No putters. John Boyd's getting left out. Yeah, but I think you are now satisfied me completely. <laughs> However, it has come to my attention. That there are those amongst them who have yet to come to the process of the And they are always saying to my whole life that there is nothing like a good thing so to promote the well being and it proves to be. Shite, I After that, I think we have ways of making you think. Are we ready? <coughs> After God. I'm fine. What? Get your hands off me, Jump. Get your hands off me, Jump. You know this world will be turning me round. Good jump. Get your hands off me, Jump. 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 Jump.
and uh, sadly this uh, uh, room, this auditorium will turn back like uh, uh, Cinderella's uh, pumpkin into a pumpkin. Um, but not before I think we should give QRM one more chance to entertain us for his music. So please <laughs> take it away.